What's going on guys and welcome to episode four of building the ultimate motorcycle garage series. I am Chase and this is the series where I'm going to take you guys along with me while I transform this typical normal renter's garage into what I believe is the ultimate motorcycle garage. This is episode four and we're tackling the walls. But guys, before we get into doing the wall stuff and I show you what I've got for the walls, I've got to say thanks to the sponsor of this video and that is the Moto Amino app. If you haven't heard of the Moto Amino app, it's an app on your iPhone or Android that is motorcycle based. It's kind of like a community where you can talk with other people, you can participate in chats and share stuff. I have a motorcycle garage build chat over there. So if you're interested, check it out. Links in the description and follow me, Chase on Two Wheels over there. And also thanks to all you guys that purchased decals that helped fund this entire project. But Enough of that stuff, let's figure out these walls. So I know a lot of you guys are super curious about what I'm gonna do to the walls because I told you I can't do anything crazy. Enter, what is this called? Peel and stick new wallpaper. This is wallpaper that looks like white brick. We are gonna change these ugly manila walls to make them look like we've got this white brick studio type situation going on. With this wallpaper stuff, this is gonna really bring the garage to what it really looked like in my head when I was like coming up with the garage. I wanted this kind of brick on the wall, wood on the floor situation. I think that's gonna look really unique and awesome. And this is a fantastic way of entirely changing the space without really doing much. So guys, before we discuss what challenges I think we're gonna have with this wallpaper, I'm definitely gonna need help with this episode. And today to help me is gonna be my fiance Heather. All right guys, so this is the container that the brick stuff comes in. I actually ordered it off of Amazon somewhere. And so this wallpaper literally has like a, it's like a sticker. You literally just peel off the back. So what I've done is I've cut one roll in half because one roll is about 20 feet and our walls in the garage here are nine feet. So if I cut it in half, I've basically got two columns per roll. I've tested both of these pieces and there is a way to get the brick to match. All right guys, check out the paper now. These are about the same pieces of paper. They are rearranged slightly and you can tell right here, like they're, they're still two pieces, but look how well they fit together. So when we start this wallpaper, one of the obvious things we need to do is make sure we start in a corner. Not only is the corner of a room gonna help you get it vertically straight, but it's also gonna be a good like come together point that'll make it the seam not so obvious because it's already a corner. There's already gonna be shadow in the corner. So that helps out with that. Installing this wallpaper, from what I understand, I've never done it before, but what it should be is I just peel the back off and then I just post it up on the wall. So similar to a decal, I figured having a little, I don't even know what this is, just a little kind of piece of plastic and like smoothing it out, I think this will help. These two are probably too small, so I don't. Okay, let's try installing the first piece. started out all right and we've got all the way to the bottom we've got a little bit of overhang but you can see it didn't go straight all the way down against the wall and I guess I wasn't perfectly straight up here trying to think of a way now to make sure the other ones are straight because otherwise if, if one gets unstraight they're all gonna be shenanigans so I'm kind of slightly worried about that. One thing I made sure to do is I ordered, I think like two or three rolls extra because I knew stuff like this would happen. I knew like errors would occur. So I thought I ordered enough to account for errors. We're gonna have to work on this first piece because I, I really want it to be perfect so that the other ones <laughs> have a better chance. Alrighty, so uh, putting up wallpaper, slightly more frustrating than I expected it to be. Um, and the way, 
This is Shay's face hands on the camera. Uh, slightly more frustrating. Uh. <laughs> okay, so putting up wallpaper slightly more frustrating than what I expected. Um, the whole corner idea, still a good idea because you have that vertical, you have that vertical line to help you guide it. But when I told Heather to pull the white paper from behind, uh, I told her to pull it from one side, and that ended up making the wallpaper skewed, and that's what like opened up that little thing. Luckily. Heather is not as much of an idiot as I am. So she was able to like get it redone and tell me what to do and it worked out. So what the hell happened that made it work? I mean, honestly, I just peeled it. I mean, we just peeled it from the bottom and you made sure it was in the corner of the wall. I think what might have helped is having um, the whole thing already peeled. That way we didn't have to stop continue pulling, maybe pulling it to the side. So like having it already peeled and then just guiding it all the way down and making sure it stayed um, up against the corner. Also, Chase wanted to throw away this first piece just because it got a little bit bunched up. But this stuff is um, a type of material that for one, you can't even tell that it was all scrunched up. Chase had a mini uh, panic attack and freak out and I had to make him go woosah on his own. But I got it unpulled apart. It is not that big of a deal. Don't throw your shit away just because it sticks together. Just pull it apart and stick it on the freaking wall. Another thing that is helpful is that it is a brick pattern. Now if this is like a pattern that was like one solid color, you'd be screwed. I'd, like there was, there would be no way I would do this with a solid colored pattern. Even like, look at these little bumps. Yeah, it would be you would less see. forgiving, for sure. Yeah. So do brick. We have to do this without the guide, and it has to be touching almost seamlessly. better. We'll find out. It's not perfect, but like from back here, that's pretty damn good, I think. One issue, we got them matched up. I mean, you can tell because these are two different pieces, but they match. But our issue is it ran out at the bottom. So this isn't really gonna matter because it's so far down and there's gonna be stuff up here. But what we're gonna do just to avoid having this little area, uh, Heather had a really good idea of why don't we just cut off the excess of this and add it to this area? So we're gonna basically try to knock out this back wall and we'll catch up then with what we learned and how it went. Also, just look at the pretty girl and just call it a, oh God. Notes, perfection is not your goal. You're not doing this to make it perfect, but a key is to focus on the uh, lines in between the brick and generally if these lines match up it'll look it'll look pretty good so we finished one wall tonight it took like two two and a half hours um after we got like the first um like two or three panels done or whatever these are called, rows, columns. But we were able to go a little bit faster. It's definitely easier with two people, but yeah, we're just really tired. So we're gonna finish this tomorrow. Trace is pretty annoyed, so he told me to do this outro. Um, but yeah, it looks really good. All right, so uh, mistake one was we started way too late. Uh, you made me do the damn outro and you still don't get in it. No, I mean, turn back your ass back around like you was walking. Go ahead, keep it Um, Okay, so if you guys are thinking about doing this whole wallpaper thing, uh, a couple notes. That takes a long time to do. So we've got this wall, this wall, that one's finished, we've got that wall. Okay, so uh, we're gonna do the rest tomorrow on day two of doing the walls, and we'll finish up tomorrow. Uh, it wasn't ideal that we started so late, but we didn't really have a choice with our schedule today, so it was whatever. But so far, it ended up pretty cool. Day two transition and go. Just so you know, there's been a massive time jump 
showers have been had and clothes have been changed and sleep has also been had. Heather and I are curious at how, like if we don't, if we don't record with this camera, how fast can we get a wall done? So I've put my little GoPro session up on the garage door and I'm gonna just gonna record it while we do this entire wall and see how long it takes us. So that way we can kind of give you guys an idea of how long one of these walls takes. That is the second wall. I don't know how long that took. Uh, reference the video to see how long it took. I think it's about an hour. <laughs> I'm getting that stuff to watch or listen to. My God. Not even gonna sugarcoat it for you guys. This process has been a pain in the ass. Like it is a ton of work, but check it out. Doorway, above the door, wall, back wall, that wall. All right guys, so before I wrap this video up, right now this entire garage is like in total shambles. Basically what I had to do was move everything to the center so I would have access to all the walls around the outside. So what I'm gonna do is move everything into its relative place and then I'm gonna show you guys the entire place as it is right now. All right, I'm gonna clean this garage real quick. So I don't know if I talked to you guys about price, but these little rolls aren't expensive by themselves, but one roll would get me about two strips. I ended up ordering 23 of these rolls, and remember the garage is about 21 feet by 20 feet. I ended up ordering 24 rolls total, and it took me, I've got three and some change left. So I used about, what is that, like 19? I, I used 20 of these rolls. So if you've got a 20 by 21 garage, you're looking at about 20 of these. I spent about 700 something dollars. I think it's like 720 bucks just on freaking wallpaper. Uh, would I do the wallpaper again? I don't know. It's been really frustrating and hopefully that didn't come through in the video, but that's one reason I don't have a ton of footage of me actually putting the wallpaper up because it is such a time consuming task of like, getting it perfect and if you just want to throw it up it would look like trash and it wouldn't take quite as long but i wanted to give it as much time as i possibly could and like before i just like lost my shit and it took probably five hours to get this entire area done and total is it worth it yeah I, like now that i'm done i'm like yeah that's awesome it's worth it if i were to go back and tell myself i might have been like dude you, sh you should probably just paint hopefully this gives you guys a better idea of the type of look I'm going for. I'm not going for the epoxied floor and the very clean look. I'm going for that like rustic kind of studio vibe type thing. You know, that's the wood floors, the wood floors, that's the brick wall. It's all fake, but I think it comes together really well. I'm sitting here looking at, I'm looking at their video and I think it looks pretty good. So if you guys are interested in this wallpaper stuff, it um, is really durable. I don't know if you guys saw earlier in the video, but like there's a couple times where like it got kind of crinkled up and me and Heather had to like rip it open. And it never ripped. We didn't have a single thing ripped. So this wallpaper, um, it's called Wall Pops. I'll put a link to it. It's off Amazon or something like that. So I'll put a link to it in the description. Um, there's a couple tools I would recommend you have. If you want to do the similar job and you're getting that Wall Pop stuff, I recommend a couple things. A box cutter. Pretty typical. A pair of good scissors. You're gonna be cutting a lot of stuff, especially to make it work correctly. And this little spatula thing. Uh, this thing helps a lot. Like sometimes I just did it with my hands and smoothed it out once I got it on the wall. Sometimes this came in a lot of handy, especially to get it into corners. So these three items, pretty freaking necessary. I, I don't know where these came from, but I'll, I'll leave links to them too if you, in case you're doing the exact same process. But guys, that is the end of episode four of building the Ultimate Motorcycle Garage. Slight pain in the butt, very glad I've gotten it over. This was the most time and energy intensive episode that I've done and that I'm going to do. Every other episode is gonna be 
easy peasy lemon squeezy for me to do. So I'm very excited that this is freaking done. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to let us know by hitting that like button and let us know what you think about the wall in the comments down below. I appreciate you guys spending some time with me and I will see you guys on episode five where I put in a tool rack. Yeah, I think we need storage now. I'll see you guys on episode five. Later.